shells are like brands. Everybody has a favorite and vehemently defends their choice. And occasionally they might tell you why you should switch. True, that shells can offer different capabilities, but they all implement core ideas that were developed decades ago. Hi all, this is Upasna from Edureka, and in this module we are going to talk about the different Linux shells, how they are similar and different from each other. So before I begin, let me take you through the topics that I'm going to cover today. First of all, I'm going to talk a little bit about the kernel and the shell, why there might be a confusion between both of them for most people. Then I'm going to spend some time talking about the evolution of the Linux shells, various different shells. Then we're going to talk about a very common confusion, shell versus bash. Are they the same thing? Are they different? How different are they? Then come the meat and potatoes of this video. So shell versus bash versus other Linux shells. And finally, we'll spend some time talking about which shell is most apt for you. Obviously, in the end, it is your choice. I'm only here to help. So without much ado, let's get straight into the module. So first of all, the kernel and the shell. So let's talk a little bit about the kernel and the shell. So what is a kernel? Now, the computer programs that allocate the system resources and coordinate all the details of the computer's internals is basically known as the kernel. Now, the kernel is the heart of any operating system. It interacts with the hardware and most of the tasks like memory management, task scheduling and file management. Now, users communicate with the kernel through a program called the shell. The shell is that utility that processes your requests. When you type in a command, basically at your terminal, the shell interprets the command and calls the program that you want. The shell uses standard syntax for all commands. It is basically a command line interpreter which translates commands entered by the user and converts them into a language that is understood by the kernel. And obviously the next logical question is what is a shell script? Since I spoke about the shell, it is only obvious that I'm going to mention the shell script. The basic concept of a shell script is a list of commands which are listed in order of execution. With that, let's move on to our next topic which is evolution of the shell. So let's begin with a short history of the modern shells and then explore some of the useful and exotic shells that are available in Linux today. All right, so the shell or the command line interpreter have a long history, but this discussion begins with the first ever Unix shell. Ken Thompson of Bell Labs discovered the first shell for the Unix called the V6 in 1971. Now, similar to its predecessor, this shell was an independent user program that could be executed outside the kernel. Now, I'm not going to talk about the Thompson shell. We are going to begin our journey with a look at the modern shell since 1977 when the Bourne shell was introduced. Now the Bourne shell created by Stephen Bourne at the AT&T Bell Labs remains useful even today. The author developed the Bourne shell after working on an Algol 68 compiler so you'll find its grammar more similar to the algorithmic language than other shells. Now the source code itself although developed in C even made use of macros to give it the Algol 68 flavor. Now the Bourne shell had two primary goals to serve as a command line interpreter to interactively execute commands for the operating system and for scripting. In addition to replacing the Thompson shell, the Bourne shell offered several advantages over its predecessors. Now the Bourne introduced control flows, loops and variables into scripts, providing a more functional language to interact with the operating system. Now the shell also permitted you to use shell scripts as filters providing integrated support for handling signals, but lacked the ability to define functions. Finally, it incorporated a number of features that we use today, including command substitution and here documents to embed preserved string literals within a script. Now, the Bone Shell was not only an important step forward, but also an anchor for numerous derivatives, many of which are used today in typical Linux systems. Next, we have the C Shell which came in 1978, it was created by Bill Joy while he was still a graduate student. It has been widely distributed beginning with the two BSD release of Berkeley software distribution 
The C shell is a command processor typically run in a text window allowing the user to type commands. Now the C shell can also read commands from a file called a script. Like all Linux shells, it supports file name, wildcarding, piping, here documents, command substitution, variables and control structures for condition testing. What differentiated the C shell from others, especially in the 1980s, were its interactive features and overall style. Its new features made it easier and faster to use. The overall style of the language looked more like C programming language and was seen as more readable. Now another improvement that we saw on the Bone shell was the Korn shell in 1983. It was developed by David Korn of Bell Labs again as a comprehensive combined version of other major shells that were present at that time. The initial development was based on the Bone shell source code. Now the Korn shell is backward compatible with the Bond shell and includes many features of the C shell as well. Now the Korn shell compiles with POSIX2, shell and utilities. Major differences between the Korn shell and the traditional Bond shell include job control, command aliasing and command history that is designed after the corresponding C shell features. After the Korn shell we have the 10x C shell which was a derivative of your basic C shell. Now this shell in 1983 was essentially the C shell but with programmable command line completion, command line editing and a few other features. Then we have Bash which still remains one of the most popular shells even in today's time. Now this was written by Brian Fox for the GNU project as a free software replacement for the Bond shell. It had been distributed widely as default login shell for most Linux distributions and Apple's Mac OS. Now the bash can also read and execute commands from a file. Like all Linux and Unix shells, it supports file name globbing, piping, here documents and command substitution. The keywords, syntax and other basic features of the language are all from the basic shell. The shell's name is an acronym for Born Again Shell, a pun on the name of the Born Shell that it replaces. The bash command syntax is a superset of the Born Shell command syntax. It supports brace expansion, command line completion, basic debugging and exception handling using trap. Now it can execute the vast majority of shell scripts without modification with the exception of the Born Shell scripts tumbling into fringe syntax behavior. The bash command syntax includes ideas drawn from the Korn Shell and the C Shell as well. After that, the world came across various other shells such as the public domain Korn Shell, which was basically a public domain or a free version of the Korn Shell. You had the Alchemist Shell, then you had the Extensible Shell or the Plan 9 Shell. Today we have many other shells, namely your Z shell, your Debian Armquist shell or the Dash shell and the Mir BSD Korn shell. In this segment, I am going to majorly focus on four shells, which will give you an idea of all the other derivative shells as well. I am going to be talking about first the basic shell, the Bone shell. I am going to talk about the Born Again shell, the Korn shell the 10x C shell and an exotic shell called the scheme shell. Moving on, let's talk a little bit about shell versus bash. Now most people use these two terms synonymously, but they are not the same thing. Now the shell command language is a programming language which is described by the POSIX standard. It has many implementations including the bash. Now because shell is a specification and not an implementation, the slash bin slash sh is a symlink or a hard link to an actual implementation on most of the POSIX systems. Now the bash started as a shell compatible implementation, but as time passed, it has acquired many extensions. Now many of these extensions may change the behavior of valid POSIX shell scripts. So by itself, bash is not a POSIX shell, rather it is a dialect of the POSIX shell. So summarizing about this, I would say that shell is actually a specification of which bash is an implementation. For a long time, the shebang line of the shell script used to point to the bash on most Linux systems. As a result, it has become more safe to ignore the difference between the two. But 
both of them are pretty much different things with that let's look at shell versus bash versus a few other linux shells first of all the c shell now if you are a network or systems administrator in a linux or unix environment you will most certainly run into the c shell so it is good to at least have some familiarity with it now casual users and even most developers will probably suggest other shells but if you are comfortable with c programming language then the c shell is a great shell to begin with now the con shell is the one that you can use interactively to execute commands from the command line or programmatically to create scripts that can automate many computer maintenance and system administration tasks now bash is far too big a subject to be covered fully in a single line but it is one of the most commonly used scripting languages that you will find today people are comfortable with bash scripting and most of the content that you will find around shell scripting will be in bash but you should probably learn it for its versatility and ease of use more than anything most colleges and universities teach their students to script in bash because it's a great place to begin as well so now i'm going to run the same script in three different shells which are derivatives of the three most basic shells which are your born shell your c shell and your con shell to see how different or similar they are so for that i have opened up my terminal this is centos 7 the fedora version so what i'm going to try to do is take a single argument which is going to be a directory name and my script is supposed to search recursively for all executable files in that directory along with the number of files that are found i'm going to reuse the script design in each of the examples to illustrate the differences so first let's see what directories do we have okay so what i'm interested in is this eclipse directory so what i'm going to do is okay this is one file java oxygen let's see if it's executable or not okay as we see the java oxygen file is executable so when i pass eclipse as an argument this directory as an argument to any of my scripts i am supposed to get an answer that this java oxygen file is executable and the number of executable files found in that particular directory is equal to one so first i'm going to run the 10x shell and see so i'm going to go and open up this 10x shell so basically what i did is open up my 10x script it's divided into three basic sections first note that i use the shebang symbol to declare this file as interpretable by the defined shell this allows me to execute the file as a regular executable rather than proceed it with an interpreter binary all right it maintains a count of the executable files found so i initialize this count with zero here so the first section this section right here tests the arguments passed by the user this argv variable represents the number of arguments that are passed excluding the command name itself now you can access these arguments by specifying their index for example if i say this hash one it refers to the first argument the script is expecting one argument if it doesn't find it it emits an error image so using this dollar zero i'm going to indicate the command name that was typed now let's come to the second section this basically ensures that the argument passed in was a directory the d operator here the hyphen d operator here returns true if the argument is a directory but note that i specify a not directory sign here this exclamatory symbol which means negate now this way the expression says that if an argument is not a directory you emit an error message which is this one and for the final section it iterates the files in the directory to test whether they are executable i use the convenient for each iterator which loops through each entry in the parentheses in this case which is the directory and then tests each as a part of the loop now this step here uses the hyphen x operator to test whether the file is an executable if it is the file is emitted and the count is increased 
I end the script by emitting the count of executables here. Okay, so now that we have understood what the script is, let's go ahead and run this. And then I'm going to type Eclipse. And as we had predicted, it says that Java Oxygen is your executable file and one executable files found. Now let me clear this out for you. Next, let's try doing the same thing with our corn shell. Now this is the code. Now as you can see, our shebang line immediately it's different. Now this corn shell is a derivative of the bond shell and it looks so much more similar to it than the C shell. So let's look at our example again. Now the first thing you'll notice here is its similarity to the first code that I had put up. Let me open it side by side for you. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I am going to open another new terminal. Let me just open another tab right here, another new window. So I can basically show you the similarity between both of these. So I'm going to go ahead and. Okay, now we have these two on both sides. So the first thing you'll notice on your corn shell script is its similarity to the 10x shell script. Structurally, the script is almost identical. The first, second, and third parts of the script, you have your test arguments, then you have your ensure argument, which is a directory, and then you iterate the directory to emit the executable files. But the key differences are evident in the way conditionals, expressions, and the iteration is performed. For example, instead of operating C like test operators, the KSH adopts the typical bond style operators. So here you can see this not equal to versus here this not equal to. Now the corn shell also has some differences related to the iteration. Now in the corn shell, the for in structure is used with the command substitution to represent the list of files created from the standard output of the command ls, representing the contents of the name subdirectory. In addition to the other features defined here, the con supports the alias feature to replace a word with the user defined string. Now the con has many other features that are disabled by default, such as file name completion, but you can enable it if you want to. So let me close this. So let's try running this file and let's put in Eclipse again. And as you see, the answer is the same. Okay, finally, we are going to try the same thing using the bash or the born again shell. Now the bash has continued to evolve with new features, support for regular expressions and associative arrays. Now, although some of these features may not be present in other scripting languages, it's possible to write scripts that are compatible with other languages. To this point, this script that you see here is identical to the corn shell script except for the shebang difference. Let me open the corn shell real quick and give you a side by side comparison on this. Okay, so as you can see, it's pretty much the same except for your shebang line, which obviously has to be different because of where they are pointing. One key difference among these shells is the licenses under which they are released. Now the bash as you would expect having been developed by the GNU project is released under GPL but the C shell 10x C shell Z shell and so on are released under BSD in BSD like license the corn shell is available under the common public license but apart from that as you can see the way you write the script in bash and corn is the same except for their shebang line so let me just run this and show it to you and as you can see the answer is the same now my point being why i chose these three specific shells is that it will give you an idea of how all the other derivative shells work more or less it's going to be similar to these three basic shells else your logic will always remain the same with that, let me move back to my presentation.
Now apart from these you can go ahead and pick the shell you like many of the ideas and much of the interfaces of the shells remain the same almost 35 years later a tremendous testament to the original authors of the early shells now in an industry that continuously reinvents itself the shell has been improved upon but not substantially changed although there have been attempts to create specialized shells customized shells the bond shell derivatives continue to be the primary shells in use with that i would like to close this session thank you and have a great day ahead i hope you have enjoyed listening to this video please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to edureka channel to learn more happy learning